Hola! Mr. Wara here! Yes, my famous intro. Hola! Hey, or hey, sir, sub dude. Hey, whatever. What's going on, my friends? It's another math video. Go math! Yes, lesson 7.1. We're looking at finding parts of a group. This is our essential question. Let's launch this baby, huh? Let's do it. Yeah, vamanos. All right, let's go ahead and pick a pen here. First things first here, this is our focus. We're going to be finding part of a group. And that does suggest fractional. How can you find a fractional part of a group? Well, you don't realize it, but we deal with fractions all the time. That's right, every time you share something. I remember when I was just like a little tyke. And I say, hey, you want half of my candy bar? And from that point on, I've been using fractions. And that's what we're going to be doing today is looking at how fractions play a part in real world. Woohoo! See that? Real world. However, this is of a group. And so it's really important that you focus, my friends. It says here, Maya collects stamps. She has 20 stamps in her collection. Four-fifths of her stamps have been canceled. Ooh, it sounds like that's bad. How many of the stamps in Maya's collection have been canceled? Well, here, look, at it gives us a little real-world information. Uh, the post office canceled stamps to keep them from being reused. So they cancel them and put their little black kind of like stamp on top, and then it's goodbye. So anyway, just to show you, it says that basically what it says, find four-fifths of 20. It's setting it up for us. So they're saying that there's 20 stamps all together here. So we're finding four-fifths of that amount. Now it says put 20 counters on your math board. And I'm going to open it up and you're going to go, whoa, dude, that's cool. Yep, is that cool? Oh, well, it's my little math board. It's, I used black because I thought the colors would look more vibrant. Here we go. So here's 20 counters on there, and that can be represented as the number of stamps that Maya had that she collected. But four-fifths of them were canceled. So we've put our 20 counters on your math board. Since you want to find four-fifths of the stamps, you should arrange the 20 counters in blank equal, equal groups. Okay, well, this can be kind of tricky, but if we're talking about this, what we need is we basically need to put this in five five groups. Now, I think I grouped these, so let me ungroup these. That way I can move them around. There you go, Simon Says. No. Here we go, Abracadabra. So here they are. Now I can kind of move them around, it, depending on how you want it to look. For example, if I were going to do groups, see, if I'm doing fifths, I kind of think about doing my groups this way. So if I were to put five here, like in one group, that is how I would do it myself. Now, there's more than one way you could solve this problem. Because I have fifths, I'm thinking, but, I, but if I do fifths, wait a second, that's going to be 5, 10, 15, 20. Oh, maybe that's not going to work. Maybe Mr. War is not going to do that, but instead, he's going to make a column of four. Okay, and then I'm going to go five across. So maybe that's the way you could do it. There's more than one way. A row is really general. We think of rows going across and columns up and down. But I think in the mathematical world, a row can be either. A row is just a row. It's all orientation in what direction you have your counters. So now you can see, hey, we made some equal groups. And it looks like if we have five going across here, that I would have one, two, three, four groups of five. Is that 20? Yes, it is. It turns out that four times five is 20. So I'm just going to pull out my pen and put five right in that little box right there. I make five equal groups of four. That's what I have. All right. Now, what we're going to do here is just draw the counters in equal groups below and how many counters are in each group. So we'll go on to the next page here by going, bing, thank you. I already did this. I put four of them, didn't I, in each group. So I'm going to just drag these over real quick as you can see how I'm doing this. Cool. We're getting there. And there's four, and there's four. So it works out. Draw the counters in equal groups below. How many counters are in each group? Well, I think we can answer that question pretty easily. That's going to be four. Four are in each group. Cool. Okay. Now it says each group represents blank of the stamps. Circle four-fifths of the counters. So each group represents, so each group, 
So it says each group represents blank of the stamp. So they're talking about a fractional piece here. This represents one-fifth of the stamps. So this is going to be one-fifth of the stamps. And then here it says, how many groups did you circle? So I'm going to be circling how many groups? Four of them. Here's one-fifth of the group, because one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths, five-fifths. Now it says, how many groups did you circle for the four-fifths? Well, one, two, three, four. It would be four groups. How many counters did you circle? Well, if we counted, it said four. We could do four times four, or we could just say skip counting, right? Four, eight, 12, 16. So we actually end up circling 16 of them. Now, four-fifths of 20 then will equal 16, or four-fifths times 20 is another way we can do this. And I'm gonna just show you this little trick here. And that is, is that what we can do here is what we call dividing out a common factor. And sometimes it's referred to as canceling. So if I were to put 20 over 1, what I could do is I see a 5 and, a, and I see a, a common factor of 5 between these two numbers. So if I were to divide that 5 out, I would get 1, right? 5 divided by 5 equals 1. But I also have to divide a 5 out of the numerator here. 20 divided by four, uh, 5 would be 4. Well, now I just multiply across, and we have 4 times 4, which is 16. The 1 doesn't matter because we can represent a fraction over 1 or just not put it there. So, blank of the stamps have been canceled, of the stamps have been canceled, or 16. Are they looking for 16? So, 16 of the stamps have been canceled. I think they're looking for 16. Okay, this is what happens when you have the fill in the blank. Not always crazy about that in math. All right, let's look at another problem here. It says Max's stamp collection has stamps from different countries. Okay, and it also says that um, he has 12 stamps from Canada. Of those 12, two-thirds of them have pictures of Queen Elizabeth II. How many stamps have the Queen on them? Draw an array to represent the 12 stamps by drawing an X for each stamp. Since you want to find two-thirds of the stamps, your array should show blank rows with an equal number of Xs. So I'll go ahead and just get my pen, and we'll do some Xs across here. Well, again, depending on how you're going to do it, we should have three going across if we're going to do it like we did with the last one. All right, so we have three. Now, that's three, and then that way I can choose another three. And I'm trying to get a total of 12, so I'm using an array. Right now, I have 3 times 3, which is 9. Now, if I do one more 3, you'll notice that just like that, okay, now I have 3 times 4. I have 12. Now, your array should show blank rows within, well, it should, sh according to this, it should have 4. 4 rows, if you're counting this way, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 rows with an equal number of x's. Okay, depending, again, on how you refer to a row. Now, this here is a column. But it's also a row, so we're just going to go this way. So don't be confused. I mean, you could have set this problem up uh, much like, rather than, well, here's red. We, we could have gone four across this way, okay? And I just want you to understand that, that that means the same. It looks a little different, but this is just the orientation is turned. So I'm going to use my black. So it says circle blank of the rows. So since this is my one row, I'm going to, use, I'm going to circle one of these. Here's one, and here's two, although we tend to say that's a column. All right, so circle two of the three rows to show two-thirds of 12. There are blank X's circled. So you can see there's four, there's two, there's four times two, which is eight. Complete the number sentences, or I like the word equations. Or these more, actually these, yeah, these are equations or expressions. Two-thirds of 12 is equal to eight, or two-thirds times 12, we have that same situation. If we divide out a common factor like of three, oops, divide out of three, we get one. Divide out of three, we get four. Two times four, eight. Now, so there are uh, eight stamps with a picture of Queen Elizabeth, the second on it. No! Yes, that is part of the code word, those two letters. Make a note of it. All right, now I'm going to go on to the next page. It says here, use appropriate tools on your math board. Use counters to find 4, 6 of 12. Explain why the answer is the same as the answer you found, 2 thirds of 12. 
and it says I need 12, so I'm going to go ahead, and it says 12, now it says 4, 6. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and make rows of what I could do of, of 6. 2, 5, and 6. So now it says, now it does say, explain why the answer is the same as the answer you found. All right, well, let me get yellow. Yellow always works well on black. I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, okay, uh, I have 12 counters. I've made one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I've made like six rows of two. And it says here that I'm going to um, circle four. Okay, here's one, two, three, four. Now those are the four rows of six. And now I have two, four, six, eight. It turns out that I have 8, which is the same answer as we had on the previous problem. It says explain why the answer is the same as the answer when you found 2 thirds of 12. Well, I'm going to say this, and I'm uh, not going to have time to type this in, but I will vocalize this. You guys can write this in the blank. And that is, well, it's, it's the same because my number of, of stamps or counters are the actual same. I still have 12. That didn't change. The previous problem I had 12, this one I have 12. Well, then why does this look different? Well, the arrangement of the rays is different. Here we have 6 times 2, which equals 12. So we actually have 6 rows of 2, or you can say 2 rows of 6, depending on how you want to say that. And also the other one was, was this is the one that we had 3 rows of 4, or 4 rows of 3 is also 12. So 12 is a composite number, and it has more than two factors. Therefore, we have different combinations, and that's why that is. I'm going to move this whole thing up like so, so I can maybe shrink it, shrinky. Okay, now you're small. Miniature. Um, now it says draw an array. Su Susanna has 16 stamps in her collection. Three quarters of the stamps are from the United States. How many of her stamps are from the United States and how many are not? We have two questions there, it sounds like to me. All right, well, let's do this. All right, so if I have 16 and it says what well, quarters, well, I'm going to go ahead and do my, my fourths this way, okay? And I'm going to cover part of my word problem, that's okay. So I'm just... I'm trying, because I have to find quarters, I'm wondering if that isn't the way, or maybe it's better to do quarters this way. I mean, you know what? Let me do it this way. And I'm working my counters over. Okay, so now you can see how that's going to look. So now I have four, and then I have four. So I'm going to go ahead and get my pen, and we'll choose black here, so black will look nice on there. It says basically how many of her stamps are from the United States, if three quarters of the stamps are from the United States. Well, here's my, I need three quarters. Here's one quarter. Here's two quarters. Oop, losing my page. Come back. Yeah, it happens. Okay. Two quarters. And lastly, three quarters. So you can see, wow, pretty well. And so I have for a 12. So I'm going to have 12 that are from the United States. And now I'm going to have four that are not from the United States. So somewhere else. Okay. Now, so blank of Susan Sam's are from the United States. That's 12, and then 4 or not. Nice, nice, huh? So you can see that it's really, really important to use counters to draw out what you're doing. And that's exactly what we did. And you know what, my friends? I just love this math and this fraction, fraction of a group. Now, live long and prosper.